Hey everyone, in this video, I'm going to be walking you through one of my client's investment account statements. Now, some of you have expressed to me that you find these statements confusing, you don't know how to read them, you don't know what's going on. So I'm going to be walking through a 401k account. Now, if you're Canadian, that's okay. These statements are more or less the same. It's just the US has slightly different rules when it comes to money that's put in on a pre-tax versus post-tax basis. But for everyone else, I'm going to be showing you what you need to know what's important and what you should be looking out for so on the front page here you'll always see an account summary and the statement period so in this case the statement period is from january 1st of this year to may 9th so at the beginning of January, the account balance was $7,289. Now, what happened during this period? Well, she contributed $1,800 into this account. So that's employee contributions. And then exchange in and out. So over here, you can see $8,001 and then negative $8,001. Net, net, this is zero. And what happened was my client sold a mutual fund, and bought another mutual fund. So in this case, nothing left this account. Net net is zero. The only thing that left this, this account were her fees. Okay, $37 um, was the fee that's associated with holding this account. And then change in account value is simply how much she has made on her investments during this period. And it's always nice to see that. It's positive. Always nice to see that, um, you know, she's making money. So that brings us to an ending balance of $9,968. Over here, under vested balance, is the same amount, okay? Which means it's 100% vested. So what does that mean? Well, when you have an employer-sponsored plan, okay, they're basically, they're giving you free money. And of course, you should be taking every single penny that they give you because that's free money. And that's one of the um, benefits of, you know, being employed with this particular employer. So there's always a vesting period, which means, well, we're going to give you these benefits, we're going to give you this free money, but you have to stick around with us. Okay, you can't just, you know, we give you these benefits and then you peace out after like six months or a year of being with us. No, in this case, the condition was, well, you have to stick around with us for at least three years before any money that we've been contributing, that we've been giving to you is 100% yours. So once something is vested, that means it is yours to keep. They cannot take it back no matter what happens, whether or not you leave, switch jobs, you get fired or whatever the reason is for you to no longer be employed with them. Once it's vested, it is yours to keep and you can take it anywhere else you choose to. So that's what vested means. And down here, you can see the personal rate of return. So how much, what is the rate of return for this period? Well, she's returned 12.4% during these, um, over the last couple of months, which is, uh, which is a very nice number. Again, it's always nice to see that it's positive. Um, but again, I don't read too much into it because it is a short term number and, it, and she's like 30 years out from retirement. So it really, this number really doesn't matter. It's just nice to see that it's positive. Now down here is what I look for when I look at um, my client's investment accounts. I want to know what their asset allocation is because I want to make sure that their investments, they're in something that is suitable for them. Now in this case, my client is invested in mutual funds and their target retirement funds. So she really has no say. She doesn't get much choice as to what this asset allocation is. The mutual fund that she's invested in pretty much decides for her. So it's nice that it's convenient um, and she doesn't have to make any decisions. All she has to do is just keep contributing money to this target retirement fund. Um, and it's, of course, for her retirement. So what's in this mutual fund that she's invested in? Well, as you can see, it's 89% stocks, 10% bonds, and 1% short-term investments, which is pretty much cash. So it's very good. It's aggressive, um, uh, and aggressive as in it's like I, I, it's optimized for her because she is 30 years out. And I always say you have to take 
risk um, and don't sell yourself short, leaving your money in bonds and short term investments, which is cash, because these are you're only going to get mediocre returns. And that is essentially a risk to your retirement by just letting your money sit there. So this is good. Again, she doesn't have much say over it because she's in a mutual fund. And the beauty of that is the managers will take care of everything for them. Now, in 25 years time, so she's 30 years out, in 25 years time, this will not look the same. And she doesn't have to do anything because this mutual fund that she's invested in will be taking care of shifting the investments out of stocks and into more bonds and short-term investments. So again, the beauty of a target retirement mutual fund. So down here gives a little bit more details on what mutual funds she's invested in. So as you can see here, the number of units owned for this VM, INX, TD2050, okay, it's zero. This is what she sold, okay, ending balance, zero, because she sold this, and instead, she bought this Vanguard Target Retirement Fund. So as you can see here, both of these are target retirement funds. She's targeted, she's um, aiming to retire in 2050, so she's almost 30 years out from retirement. So this is just the breakdown of what uh, what she was was invested in, what she sold, and what she decided to buy. Now, over here on the second page, you can see there's some fine print, some disclaimers and stuff, so you can just go ahead and ignore that. There's going to be a lot of those. And then over here is her contribution information. So, as you can see, she's 100% um, invested in this one mutual fund. That's fine. Um, otherwise, if she had more than one investment, it'll just show the breakdown of how many of which funds she's invested in. But in this case, it's just the one fund, so it's 100%. Now down here, okay, and this is where the breakdown of pre-tax money is shown. So $1,800 is money that she has not been taxed on yet. This comes off her salary. Okay, the IRS has not taken it, and that's the benefit of a 401k. Um, and in Canada, it's um, RS, it's uh, equivalent to an RRSP. So that money is pre tax It's not taxed yet. You put the money in there, it grows tax-free, and then upon retiring or withdrawals, that's when you get taxed. So money in here is grown tax-free, and it breaks it, and it's broken down by what hasn't been taxed yet because one day the R the irs the government will get their fair share now another thing for this is um and this is mainly for um, americans it's because they have the option of converting this to a roth account now she's not going to do that right now because she's currently still employed with this company but if she were to leave this company Okay, this and she no longer um, is a part of this 401k plan. What happens is it it just pretty much converts to a regular um, traditional IRA. And in that case, she has the option of converting it to a Roth because right now she's not eligible for a Roth IRA because her income is too high. So she can convert this to a Roth. And the beauty of a Roth is that the money is also grown tax-free. But when you withdraw it, it's also tax free. But of course, you're going to get taxed before the money goes in. So when she if she decides to convert this account to a Roth, she's going to get taxed because this um, this money hasn't been taxed yet. It's been growing tax free. And the money that's been put in has also not been taxed yet. So this is why they separate um, what's pre-tax and um, everything else. So this is the breakdown um, for the contributions that have gone into this account. Now down here under account activity, again, it's just being um, it's just being broken down by the funds that she has in this in this account now she had this mutual fund account this mutual fund she was invested in but she sold it and she decided to buy this vanguard mutual fund so again exchange in and out the fees associated with it the contributions towards each of these funds and the change in account value how much she has earned in these funds and then of course the ending balance 
everything is in this one fund, nothing in here, and you get your total. Now down here, it's just additional fund information. It's really light. It's just showing what is the asset allocation for this mutual fund that she was in 90% stocks, 7% bonds, 3% cash. So more or less the same as her Vanguard one. Um, and again, it's shown here, 89% stocks, 10% bonds, 1% cash. So this is um, a breakdown of a 401k investment account statement. Let me know if you have any questions a lot of these are um, the terminology and how they're how they're broken down is different and it varies by brokerage. But, you know, the terminology and how certain things are presented, it's more or less the same. So hopefully this was helpful for you. Hopefully it's um, you have a better idea of what these things mean when you are looking at your account statements.